All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and this year's edition of Just The Tips. We're back. Uh, it's going to look a little bit different this year, as you can see, uh, no Jeruzzi this time. That's uh, mostly due to time constraints at the moment uh, with work and stuff. Jeruzzi and I are not going to be able to be uh, in the same room that often, unfortunately, going into this year. So the Just The Tip show will be a solo mission for most of this year. However, we will still be doing the Drew Footy show each week on his week. So my show will be, again, if you didn't watch it last year, it'll be, you know, tips and predictions for the upcoming round. And Drewsy's show will be kind of a, a wrap of everything that's going on in the football world and the preview round etc just as an aside i did take part in the jersey yarn jersey's podcast over on his channel as well which i believe should be out sometime today so if you haven't checked out jersey's channel and subscribe to him i recommend you go do that and you will see myself on a podcast for about an hour we spoke for yesterday on top of that as well we've been cranking the true footy podcast in the background as well so you would have seen yesterday we did our season prediction podcast that should be now available both on spotify and itunes and all that and of course on youtube as well but in today's video, we're going to be cranking out specifically a look at round one and my tips for that game. It's kind of snuck up on us. I can't believe that the season starts in just two or three days from now. Melbourne taking on the Bulldogs. We will also be doing a live stream Thursday night, Carlton versus Richmond, uh, about 4.30 Perth time. And I think that's 7.30 over East as well. So if you want to jump back on the live stream bandwagon with us, make sure you're there. Today's video is going to be a pretty simple format. I'm going to cycle through uh, the squiggle ladder predictor so you can sort of see the ladder updating as I do my tips as well so you can sort of map out what the league's going to look like week to week we are going to be running the footy tipping competition again this year uh, so look out in the description for the link to join that up as well i do believe that i'm 99 percent sure that if you were part of it last year you don't have to do anything this year to join it still says we have 850 members but if you haven't joined up yet now's the chance go look in the description of this video and we also have the invite code to the fantasy league fantasy league is a bit different i think you do have to join up even if you were part of it last year the weekly format for the channel this year will most likely be uh, just the tips will be a staple we're going to run the podcast every two to three weeks ideally and then of course you'll still see me doing the odd video around random topics in the afl uh, across the weeks where i get time but enough waffling let's get straight into round one when melbourne take on the western bulldogs in the first game of the season the mcg i think this is the first time uh, at least the first time intentionally where the round one matchup the opening game of the season has been a rematch of the grand final so it's going to be a football bonanza over east i think all the uh, victorian teams are playing each other uh, which is great for them as a celebration of football coming back to the state the poor buggers have barely had any football there over the last few years and this is the grand final replay obviously that should have taken place at the mcg and now they're going to showcase that game at the g uh, where it would have originally been scheduled of course so melbourne are obviously the reigning premiers having smashed the bulldogs in that grand final so both sides i think will come into this with a lot to prove particularly the bulldogs 74 points didn't really show how close they were to winning the flag to be honest it was just a case of melbourne and turning it on when it really mattered. The Bulldogs sort of fell asleep for about five to 10 minutes and that's all it took for Petrarca and Oliver and all those guys to, to really get a hold of them. For me, as I've been saying in all my sort of preseason content, I think the Ds are still the team to beat, to be honest. And usually the question around uh, the rematch in round one is hunger and both teams will have plenty to prove, I think. I think what's an argument against complacency is this is the game where these teams can showcase in front of their home fans the grand final that obviously couldn't take place there. So I think the Ds will come into this red hot. The Dogs did beat them at uh, the MCG, if I'm not mistaken, last year. I think Melbourne won the Marvel one. Usually you'd think it would be the other way around. But I'm just going to tip with who I think is the better team and I still think Melbourne are the better team. It's going to be tight. I could see it going either way, but I'm going to tip the Demons to win this by about 22 points. Next, you've got Carlton and Richmond, and of course, this is usually the season opener, and it's been relegated to, uh, it's still Thursday night, but it's the second game of the season this year, and this game is kind of a rivalry in the sense that it's they use each other as sort of a, a measuring stick, or at least Carlton would look at Richmond as a measuring stick each year to see how they've improved, and this is coming at a time where Richmond has just come off a pretty injury hit season where they were nowhere near the flag. I think they finished 12th or 11th, if I'm not mistaken. That plus all the sort of pre-season optimism around Carlton that we do see every year, but I think it's most justified this year this is probably the year Carlton would do it however I'm still quite bullish on Richmond and I think if you add back a lot of their players that missed with injury last year in particular Dusty Martin the best 22 is still good enough to beat Carlton I do worry a little bit if they have injuries again what their depth really looks like with a few retirements as well but I still think Richmond will turn up to play it'll be a good game this has been a good game for a couple of years in a row now but I think Richmond will be too good and win by three goals 
Next up, you have the Saints hosting Collingwood at Marvel Stadium. Both of these sides missed finals last year. The Saints were quite disappointing, uh, having won a final the previous season. They couldn't really back it up, had their own fitness and injury concerns as well. And Collingwood kind of uh, capitulated a little bit and sort of embraced a bit of a, a genuine rebuild. And I still think going into this year, it's going to be a rebuilding year with their first season under Craig McRae. Whereas the Saints, I think with their mature list, they'll absolutely be setting their ambitions on finals. And that's why I think uh, St Kilda should be pretty heavily fancy in this one. Collingwood is certainly a chance of an upset, but I think the Saints will win this by about four goals. So let's call it 25 points. Next, we have Geelong hosting the Dons at the MCG. So not down at GMHBA. It is going to be at the MCG. There's a lot of negativity around Geelong as there is each preseason. We think because they're getting older, they're going to drop off the face of the earth, but it's still they still keep avoiding that. And they did make the prelim last year, although they got annihilated in that game. Conversely with Essendon, I think there's a lot of optimism because they, they're a young side with a lot of improvement both last year and still yet to come. So there's a lot of belief that they could potentially... Uh, really shake things up this year. However, I still think Geelong, their best 22 and their, in fact, their depth is still pretty good. Midfield is strong. The back line is really strong and uh, they've got the two best key forwards in the game, in my opinion, in Cameron and Hawkins. So I think Geelong are the, the more fancied side and I think they'll win this game as well. Uh, let's call it, I'll call it a close one because I think Essendon is capable of really taking it up to them, particularly when it's not a GMHBA. So I'll say the Cats win by 15. Next up, we have the Sydney Derby uh, at Stadium Australia. I think it's called a core stadium now. So a bit more neutral, although uh, I believe the final last year was quite neutral as well down in Tasmania. The Giants and the Swans are pretty evenly rated. The Swans finished one spot higher last year, although it, to be fair to them, throughout that whole season, they did look a fair bit stronger than the Giants. But you wouldn't think it when they played each other because the Giants actually won two out of the three contests, including that final last year. I've been talking up the Giants this preseason and uh, I believe they have a lot to offer, but we do have to bear in mind that Toby Green will not be available for this game and he was a key part in that final. That was where he got suspended for uh, that contact with the umpire as well. So I think he's going to miss the first five games, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that opens the door a little bit for Sydney. I tip the Giants to finish slightly higher than the Swans. I think it'll be another evenly rated year. That being said, I actually got a feeling that Sydney will come out and win this first game. It'll be a close one and I'll say the Swans by 10 points. Next, you have uh, two of the biggest teams in the competition, to be honest, and probably the two strongest interstate sides off the top of my head. Brisbane hosting Port Adelaide at the Gabba. Both of these sides, I think, will be major players this year as well. Not only are they strong in the here and now, but I think there's a lot of upside in that 20 to 24 sort of age bracket on both lists. This is a big game. It's an exciting game. And I think from memory, the Lions sort of have the wood over Port a little bit. I think more often than not, they do happen to play in Queensland, which is a factor. But this being at the Gabba as well, makes me want to tip the Lions. This could be, you know, a prelim or potentially even a grand final preview. That's how highly I rate these sides. But I think that the home ground advantage uh, even with the Lions missing someone like Hipwood this year, I think they'll be just fine. And I think they'll beat the power by, let's call it 13 points. It'll be a good game. Next, you have a uh, lower sort of table clash between Hawthorne and North Melbourne at the MCG. Both of these sides are not really predicted to play finals, particularly North Melbourne, still considered in that rebuild phase. There's a little bit more optimism around Hawthorne, but I've also seen some people predict them to finish, you know, bottom four and potentially wooden spooners as well. I don't really agree with that. I think in terms of comparing the best 22s of both of these sides, I think Hawthorne's a little bit stronger, even if North Melbourne's talent is really, really strong. They're still quite young and raw. Young sides can be dangerous early in the season as well, although North kind of did the opposite last year. I think they really built into their form and there's a lot of momentum that they can really build on. I think uh, they've had some really good games towards the end of last season. That being said, so did Hawthorne. I think Hawthorne are slightly stronger and I'm going to tip them to beat them by 29 points. Adelaide versus Fremantle at Adelaide Oval. This should be a relatively good game. Adelaide is considered a, uh, obviously a rebuilding side as well, having finished bottom four the last couple of years. Wooden Spoon is in 2020, but I think at times their best form sort of belied their ladder position. They look really good at times beating Melbourne. Uh, they beat Geelong in round one as well, and, and there were had glimpses throughout the season where you thought, oh, there, there is a good team in there somewhere. It's just a very young, inexperienced team. For Fremantle, on the other hand, they're sort of coming out of a rebuild phase, and I think this is the first year where they think, you know, it's it's kind of finals or bust. That's the minimum expectation for them, I think. Last year, the Dockers did knock them off over in Adelaide. Fremantle are relatively healthy as well, which is a big factor. That's not something they could have said over the last few years. Preseason form's pretty good. I just think Fremantle are the better side, and I'll be surprised if they don't win this. I'll give them a 26-point victory. The final game of the round, West Coast versus the Gold Coast Suns, is actually going to be a tough game, I think. Last year, uh, obviously, West Coast were very heavily favoured, and they only won by three goals. We seem to have this knack for not playing that well against the Suns and uh, as I said about North Melbourne Gold Coast again are also very dangerous at the start of seasons uh, when they're I, 
I presume it's because their younger bodies haven't fatigued yet, haven't been uh, bashed around so much. This is a real danger game uh, for the Eagles because despite being at home, the injury list is terrible. I mean, Jack Darling sort of came in and then He's out for a month with a foot injury straight away. Tim Kelly was our best player in the preseason game against Fremantle. He's primed for a big year. I think his family has COVID. I don't know if he does yet, but he's either going to miss this game because he's ill or he's going to miss it because he hasn't been able to train for the last week and whatever. So with those outs, it's making me very, very nervous for this game. The Suns looked pretty good in the preseason. It is only preseason, but their ball movement looked pretty good and they look like they could take the next step. They've got some players like Rao coming back into the side, although it does come at the expense of Greenwood, who obviously left and was a pretty good player for them last year. Ben King is a massive out and that avenue to goal is what might might just slightly put me in favor of the Eagles here. I think it's going to be it's potentially game with a round and both of these sides are not expected to play finals but I'm going to say it's actually a good game over at Optus Stadium but the Eagles win by four points in an unconvincing display. So that's it guys that is my ladder after round one. I probably went a little too conservative on the margins. Uh, Hawthorne is top of the ladder at the end of round one because of their 29 point victory. I'm sure there's going to be a game where one team blows the other. Uh Whoa. I'm sure there's going to be games where one team smashes another, um, but it's uh, it's a little bit hard to predict in round one. So that is my tips. Let me know in the comments what you would have done differently. Uh, not all of those were simple. I'm sure there's going to be at least three upsets. And uh, to be honest, if I get six out of nine, I'll be pretty happy with that for round one, to be honest. But as always, guys, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit subscribe. As I said, join that footy tipping comp if you want to take part this year, AFL Fantasy as well. Don't forget, we are sponsored by Manscaped as well. Uh, and if you check out the podcast, you'll see that they've got heaps of new products. Uh, which is very exciting as well. So they've really expanded their range and you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUEFOOTY20. All caps, all one word, and all that stuff is in the description of this video as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week for round two.